Everyone in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you to think. This quote was given by a pioneer in our tech industry and a revolutionary guy named Steve Jobs. You know, what is so great about this quote? It actually asks people to think. And that is a very first step to solving any kind of a problem. The faster you are able to think, the faster you are able to solve the problem. Hi, I am Shubham Agrawal and I am working as a software engineer at Google. Before we get into this video, check out the Scalar events where we conduct the free masterclasses taught by industry experts. The link is in the description below. Also, subscribe to the Scalar YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for all tech related insights. I am a problem solver day in and day out. So why not help you guys get better at it? Today, I am going to talk about why problem solving is such an important skill to have specifically in our tech industry. I will also share with you a very interesting problem and we will solve that by the end of this video. So stay tuned and make sure to stick around till the end. Let us first try to understand the psychology behind it and why problem solving is such an important skill to have. So what is problem solving? Let's first start by defining what a problem is. A problem is a set of comprehensive situation where you derive an outcome under given constraints. Let's take a very simple real life example. A contractor was assigned a task to paint a building. A building consists of X floors and Y rooms. He was assigned this task to complete in Z amount of time. Now, if a contractor has already solved the similar kind of a problem, it would be easy for him to optimize for Z amount of time. There could be multiple solution to this problem. A contractor could have assigned multiple workers across multiple floors or he could have assigned many workers in a single floor. The solution may vary depending upon contractor to contractor. Obviously, it depends upon worker's efficiency. However, if a new guy is given the responsibility, he will find it difficult and work accordingly as per his limited skill set. He might struggle with a lot of factors. Maybe he'll start painting the room one by one and try to complete it floor by floor. It is very much plausible that he won't finish the task in Z amount of time. Now this scenario is very layman. Let's try to map it to our programming world. As we know that different workers comes with a different skill set, if they are performing the similar kind of task, they can vary depending upon their efficiency. The same goes with the data structures. We have maps, hash maps, vectors and arrays. They all perform similar kind of task that is storing the data. But however, when we are trying to use it in different operations, the final outcome that we want to derive from the problem may vary. So it is very important to understand your tools in hand while you are actually trying to solve the problem. Once you know about your workers or resources, the next thing would be how you're going to logically place them. That is, what are the set of procedures you have to take for them to work cohesively and efficiently. When you start doing this, your mind will start thinking of better alternatives. That means you are eventually leading yourself where you are looking for an optimization for that problem. Problem solving is like building muscle memory. The more different kind of problem you'll start solving, you are eventually building a different skill set. When you start thinking or seeing similar kind of problems, your mind will map to that and you'll eventually end up solving those kinds of problems. In 1930s, an American industrial psychologist, Norman Mayer, introduced the world with a very famous and classical problem called a nine dot problem. The constraint of the problem is that you are given four lines and you have to connect all the dots without lifting your pen or pencil. For smart cookies who already know the solution, comment us down below. And for others, let's discuss the problem and I will also share a fun fact about this problem. Solving the nine dot problem. For starters, we can try exploring the solution using trial and error. It is easy to draw the lines, but it doesn't run through all the dots. Let's try to do the brute force way. In this way, we are actually exploring all the problem space. Let's draw all the possible lines that pass through all the dots. Let's not worry about making them connected for now. We can draw three horizontal lines. We can draw three vertical lines. We can also draw four lines in diagonal that connect all the dots. Now let's superimpose all the solutions. Now, if we look at this carefully, 
we will observe that four of them actually connects. So what is so great and beautiful about this solution? You start something very trivial, which you already know, like how to connect all the three dots. These solutions are not individually solving the problem, but when you combine the three solutions, you end up getting the final outcome. The hint to this solution is actually thinking out of the box. If you'll notice, one of the diagonal lines is actually coming from out of the box. The phrase thinking out of the box actually came out because of this problem. Steps that can help build your skill set. If I have to build a deep understanding on a specific topic, let's say graph, I would first start thinking about implementing the graph itself. There are different ways. I can start with thinking about implementing in either a metrics based approach or using an agency list based approach. Now, it's very important to understand the implementation details of both of these approaches while you're solving the problem. Because at the end, it will greatly dictate the final outcome that you want to derive from the problem. You should always know the pros and cons of the approach that you're taking before solving the problem. For example, why you are choosing a breadth first search versus a depth first search? Why you are choosing an unordered map versus an ordered map? Now, these choices are really critical when you are dealing with optimizing the overall problem. Once you develop a deep understanding on different data structures, start solving problems on different platforms. There are different varied online platforms available and I will leave it up to you guys which one you choose. There is one rule which really helped me where I am today, which is a 60-30-10 rule. According to this rule, you first try to solve 60% of easy questions, 30% of medium questions and dedicate 10% of your questions to the hard problems. Let's understand why it is important. If you have already developed a deep understanding about the topic and you are directly jumping to a hard level problem, it's more likely that you will end up giving in. Remember, our mind is wired to get the sense of motivation and achievements. If you'll start working on solving an easy level problem, it will eventually help in building the consistency and indirectly your mind will sense it as a small achievement. This will help you being there in the game. And once you feel that you have solved enough easy level problem, you can probably notch it up a bit and start solving medium and hard level problem. I've seen a lot of people solving hundreds of problems, but they are unable to crack their dream company. You know, this is not a number game. The amount of problem that you'll end up solving varies greatly depending upon how well you have understood the topics and how well you are executing the process. There could be one quality question that can help you attain the critical thinking ability, data structures and optimization skills rather than you are solving tens of problems. Remember, no problem is a bad problem. Interviews are nerve wracking, especially talking about the man companies. There are a lot of moving parts that can go against your favor if not done correctly. It's easier said than done. Now what can help out here are the mock interviews. If you have seniors or mentors that can help you out in the process, you might end up having a chance of landing in your dream job. First, you should understand the requirement and should be very clear on the objective that you are trying to solve. Remember, make sure that you are keeping the session interactive with the interviewer and trying to clarify as much doubt as possible so that you are creating a bond between you and an interviewer. There are cases when you took a lot of time to come up with a solution, but what end up happening is you have minimal time to code. Now this will create an anxiety and you will end up writing a bad code with trivial bugs. Now how to come out of this situation during an interview? Remember I talked about the mock interviews? These are really helpful. Make sure to take enough mock interviews. Also, while you are practicing, make sure you time box because you don't have a luxury to solve the problem in two to three hours. That's it from me guys for today. I hope you liked the video and that will help you get better at problem solving skills. Also, make sure to subscribe to the Scalers YouTube channel for any tech related updates.